السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Now my topic is called the sound of silence and I think that salam is more on the side of silence So let me go back again Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh You see one day a man walked into a recording store and he asked the salesperson do you have any CDs on the sound of silence? And the salesman said, I'm so sorry, sir, that the sound of silence, well, it was silence. There was nothing to record. So this topic is not going to be silent and there will be a lot of noise. And if I don't make enough, you have to promise me you will help make some noise. Yeah. So sometimes silence is good. There are different dimensions of silence. Remaining silent for your soul is good. Remaining silent on injustices is not good, and it can fall anywhere in between that. I just want to say how there are times we can be silent or we should be silent. Abu Huraira reported, Ja'a nasun min ashabi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa sa'alu, inna najidu fi anfusina ma ta'adhamu ahaduna anna takallam. It's a hadith reported by Imam Muslim. That some companions came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, Ya Rasulullah, we find in ourselves some thoughts too terrible to talk about. And he said, are you really suffering from that? And they said, yes. And he said, this is a clear sign of Iman, that there are thoughts within you, but you don't want to express them because of how dangerous those thoughts can be for other people. So you don't make suggestions. So that is a part of Iman where silence is good. But on the other hand, the sound of silence can be deafening when it comes to speaking out against critical issues that are bothering us as an ummah or the world as a whole. Absence of voices or actions can be damaging or as damaging as promoting harmful policies themselves. Remaining silent on issues just like the man in the store, it is silent. There is nothing to record. Maybe that can be seen as complicit, perpetuating harmful practices, or contribute to normalizing of harmful behaviors. My dear brothers and sisters, nations before this ummah were cursed because of that, because of their silence on issues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاؤُودَ وَإِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوا لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Those among the children of Israel who disbelieved were cursed by the tongue of David and Jesus the son of Mary. That was because they disobeyed Allah and the messengers and they were ever transgressing beyond bounds. So things were happening evil around them and they allowed it to happen because they profited from them. My dear brothers and sisters, there are many issues 
that will require people with conscience to raise their voices and speak out against. As we witness every year in the recent years in Masjid Al-Aqsa, in the blessed month of Ramadan, there is a brutal exercise and torture on the worshippers. The videos speak for themselves. Violation of places of worship have taken place while the world remains silent. Or in India, the burning and destruction of centuries old masajid. Where is the voice of the so called champions and the bastions of human rights? Where is the voice of the Muslim nations? All we hear is a deafening silence. Just like the man in the store, it is silent. There is nothing to record. On social issues, the erosion of family. Our parents used to say, back in their days, they get informed, perhaps the day before, or the day of their marriage, like my father. He was playing cricket, and he was told, come home, you're going to get married tonight. And he got married that night. And he lived with his wife until she died. May Allah bless her soul. Then he married my mom. And so imagine those were the days when family values were so strong. Try to do that today and see what happens. Today, the lines of marriage have become so blurred as the definition of marriage keeps changing. While dominant forces continue to pursue with their agenda that not only blur the lines of marriage, but delete the lines between genders. Poverty. You lend and you help a homeless person, you are a hero. And you are forced to keep silent and working silently, and they will blow the bugle to say, oh, this is a good organization. They help the poor and the needy. But when you raise your voice and break the silence and say, why are these people hungry? You are deemed as a troublemaker. And suddenly your organization, your relief group, that once was hailed a hero, is now considered to be an outlaw. Racial issues. How many people are targeted, targeted for no other reason than the fact that their color of their skin do not comply with those who are around them? We have seen the struggle in this country and across the globe, how people are just killed because of the color of their skin. My dear brothers and sisters, genocide that are taking the place, the likes of which we witness with our Rohingya brothers and sisters, our East Turkmenistan brothers and sisters, and reports of selling of their body parts, our Kashmiri brothers and sisters, so much noise is making on the ongoing war in Ukraine, and rightfully so. But why the deafening silence when the faith or the color is different? Exploitation. So much exploitation on child labor, forced labor, low wages, low wages in poorer countries so that powerful nations can get cheap or even free food and services. Half of the world's total wealth are owned by 1%, the top 1% of the world, while 1.3 of the global wealth is owned by 55% of the world's population. The exploitation of Africa's resources, of its precious minerals. 
South Asia of its great resources so that Europe can build their grand civilization that we have to go pay and see. Such exploitations are continuing as the West support agencies, leaders, and individuals who have glaring integrity issues and the worst human rights violation while claiming to be champions of human rights, and they choose to remain silent. Those who make the laws of human rights violation should themselves at least live by it. On one hand, they have an exploit exploitative dominance over these countries. On the other hand, they teach people of the same, the same people that they're exploiting, they tr teach us about democracy. And if that's not enough, they turn around and they show how poor Africa is and how innocent people should donate money. Let's raise money for Africa. They themselves who exploit show pictures of poor African children with little or no clothes, a bowl with no food, and on top of their exploitation, exploit innocent people to donate to the cause of charity. My dear brothers and sisters, just by one example, and there are hundreds of examples, 20 million people were killed in the Congo, and millions whose hands were chopped off by the then king of Belgium, King Leopold, so that the cocoa beans can go to Belgium and Belgium can have the finest chocolates in the world. So many untold stories, so many horror stories that we hear, colonization, slavery. And just like the man in the shop, there is nothing to record. It is silent. We don't hear about King Leopold. We don't hear about the 20 million innocent men, women, and children who were massacred in the Congo, but we hear about Belgium chocolates, because that's what they did to get those chocolates. As for the ideological warfare, they fight to control the mind of the masses. How much have they gained, even in our strongest of hold in our Aqidah, how much they have penetrated in our soul that we stand up in our salah, but our mind is somewhere else. Our thought is somewhere else. And we live with all these problems and pretend as if they don't exist, like an ostrich that buries his head in the sand, pretending not to be seen or heard around. But don't get me wrong, there is a danger in speaking out. There is a danger in our voices be heard. No doubt, people of conscience have been raising their voices, whether from faith perspective, humanitarian perspective, journalists, but some ended up paying with the ultimate price with their dear lives. So many people prefer to remain silent on crucial issues because they fear the backlash of retaliation. In conclusion, I would like to say there is a solution to this problem. And this solution is not from you or me. It is the creator who has given this solution. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best ummah ever raised for mankind. You enjoin what is right, you forbid what is evil and you believe in Allah. We are not a silent nation. Yes, we use hikmah, we use wisdom, but as a last resort, not as the first resort. 
Munkar will not be eliminated by the sound of silence. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Inna nasa idha ra'aw dhaliman falam ya'khudu ala yadayhi aw shaka ay ya'ummuhum allahu bi'aqabin min. When the Prophet, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the people see an oppressor, but they do not try to stop him, soon Allah will cause all of them to suffer punishment because of him. It's a hadith reported by Imam Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, and others. My dear brothers and sisters, with all that is going around us and in this world, remaining silent is not an option as believers in Allah. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.